So we had a uh, busy weekend of racing, some exciting, some not so exciting. Uh, we'll get into the uh, the country club race. And we'll talk a little bit about our live stream, our first live stream of the year, and how I jinxed Max first happened. This is Zephyr Racing's Garage Talk. I'm DJ Flook. I'm Eric Richardson. So going back to our stream from Saturday night into Sunday morning, it was Sunday morning for you the start, but I'm like, Max cannot, like, he is way overdue for a DNF. And I said, you can't go that many races without a mechanical problem, a pit stop mistake, uh, you know, getting caught up in a wreck, making a mistake on the track. I mean, he is human. Doesn't seem like it, but he is human. And then like five minutes later, his brake catches on fire. Yeah, what was it, like 43 or 44 races? Yeah, it was like 43 races without... It was the 2022 Australian Grand Prix. Well, that was his last DNF. He didn't seem really upset about it either. That's the crazy part. <laughs> he knows he's going to win the next like, 19. I mean, he's only, he's only four points up on the championship. And, uh, yeah, it's it's he like, oh. Right rear brake stuck open. Yep. And he just, heated yep. and then went... Oof. Then as he's pulling into the pit, you just see it explode. <laughs> the, the the best part of it, uh, the memes going around this week was they said we have found out why his brake caught on fire, and they zoomed in and there was a picture of an appendix on on the brake. <laughs> Applying it, Carlos Sainz took his removed appendix and put it in, uh, shoved it into the brake of his car of Max's car. You know, it's so funny. It's great to see somebody else win, just not do the same thing over and over and over. Yeah, it's just we've we've so reached this pattern. The race was still the exact same. Yeah, it's just like, oh, we we're gonna same have a close race, and then no, out in front, ran there the whole day, and there was no drama. He was comfortably up there, so losing Max in the race did not change anything i mean the, the only thing that happened that was of any excitement after that i mean you had lewis with a dnf you had george russell crashing which he's done that the previous two times carlos signs won a race uh two things on that one i don't know if i necessarily agree with alonzo's receiving a penalty yeah i mean you're a racer you're gonna try to throw your competitor off you're gonna make it hard to pass yeah i i i agree i i, I went back and watched it again i'm like eh. yeah he maybe slowed earlier i yeah but i don't think there's anything egregious you're gonna turn differently and you can accelerate sooner i think i think it was martin brundle said something to the extent of you know alonzo's looking to potentially go to mercedes and now they're gonna be like look what you did to our car like, does that um, hurt his chances? Um, yeah, maybe Alonzo braked early and caught Russell by surprise, but a good racer should still be able to stay in control of the car. It is unfortunate that he got lucky. The way that he bounced off the wall and ended up basically floor first with oncoming traffic on a blind turn, he's lucky somebody didn't plow through it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he was screaming for a red flag. Yeah, he wanted those cars to stop moving and get slowed as quickly as possible. So we're lucky that we didn't see an even bigger crash. Yeah, yes, we are. He walked away just fine, which is good. I mean, the, the other point of drama from the event was, you know, they let Lando buy Piastri at his home race, and you know, Piastri misses the podium. In his home race, so uh, that 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 didn't go over well with the Australian fans. And then we touched on it. Logan Sargent did not get to even start the race. He did not because he had to give up his car to Alex Albon, who wrecked his in practice. And uh, they, Williams announced that they're going to be repairing his car for Japan and not sending over a new car. So. You know, they're going to only have two cars again going into Japan. Like, you know, one and of them wrecks, they're going to have the same thing shredded. again. Albon's car was shredded after practice. Yes, it was. 
And then Haas ended up scoring what three points and Williams got zero. Yep. Haas double got double points that weekend. Uh good for them. Um RB got some points. Yuki got into the top ten. Uh, allegedly helmet Marco has told Daniel Ricardo, you've got like two races to step it up or you're going to get replaced by Miami. Give some equipment to drive in and you might see a difference. Yeah. Hey, Yuki, Yuki scored points. Uh, it helps Max DNS, Lewis DNS. I, I just feel like Lewis is checked out. His, so. his his body language looks like a guy who just is like just kind of going through the motions now. Could you imagine like if he was in a you know a, a serious run for the championship and that happened to him, he probably would have been pretty upset. And he just it, it just to me it looked like he just like whatever you know he made the comment too about starting outside the top ten. He's like you know it is what it is. I've accepted that's you know. That it is what it's going to be, basically. I mean, he's uh, this is going to be this trends downward like this. You know, we're in the what third race of the season, and he's already mentally checked out on Mercedes or appears to be mentally checked out. That's uh, oof, could you imagine when we get to the fall races? Well, and I wonder if some of that, if the Mercedes cars just are not fast this year, when you had no. Perez moving through the field, you had both Hamilton and Russell going, that car is fast, and Russell going, that car is a rocket ship. Yeah. When the Red Bull just flew past them. Yeah, it's... There was no challenge to even give. And they've talked about, you know, Max and if he leaves Red Bull over all this drama there, which... Funny, we actually had something to talk about with Red Bull other than a race win or their drama this weekend. Um, but it's like, oh, would Max go to Mercedes? And it's like, why would he? I there's no way you'd want to go there. I mean, I would almost, you know, it's. I mean, Mercedes is what fourth best, fifth best. Yeah, it's Ferrari's number two. Ferrari's two. McLaren's not that far behind them. Yeah, it's toss up there between Aston Martin and Mercedes. Yep. The other five teams have like 10 points total. Hey, Alpine, they had a decent weekend. Oh, man, crazy stuff. So we got Japan in a week, a little over a week, which is interesting because, you know, they're going back to China for the first time in several years now. I think what twenty? Yeah, they they haven't been there since twenty nineteen. I think I think they shut it yeah. down for COVID and haven't been back since. Yeah, first time back there in a while. Toto will not be at the Japan Grand Prix. He'll be calling stuff from home. <laughs> you want to talk about checked out? <laughs> Actually, they said that that was pre-planned before the season that he wasn't going to be there for that one. Yeah, I was reading. He's going to be trying to step back a little bit, but was a planned thing one of the two races a year that he would not to. Actually, I feel like Japan last year he didn't go to that either. Yeah, sounds familiar. Don't pull us to that. We could be wrong. He didn't go to Brazil a couple years ago because I if I remember right, the one that Russell won. Because I, I feel like he had to take a FaceTime call from Toto after he won the race. I think. I mean, I might be completely mixing that up, but I, I want to say that that happened at Brazil. But yeah, I mean, he skips out on a couple races a year. Interesting for a team principal to like, hey, you know what? I'm just not going to show up to work today. So the IndyCar series went to a glorified test session at a country club in Palm Springs called the Thermal Club. Ghost John re- got hit by Scott Dixon, caused a wreck on turn one, lap one. Um, Pietro Fittipaldi got disqualified for not having a full tank of fuel. Um, you know, I was traveling through it, but I hardly paid attention to it. It's a, I lost interest very. 
I lost interest very quickly. Uh, yeah. Honestly, yeah. like I spent, I spent most of the weekend uh, watching the Coda races, and I know they're not the most popular race in the NASCAR series. But we'll get to that in a, in a bit. But I, I really like the track. Dollar challenge too, in the winner only got five hundred. Yeah, what is that all about? Because I was like, oh, is it like the top five purse it adds up to a million? No, it doesn't. It was, it was like 500, 350, 250. So I'm like, where do they get this million dollar challenge thing from if, if he's only getting half a million? So I never never figured that out. But I don't know. It, it, it was it's kind of boring. There are so many rules behind it for the qualifying. And then the draw of group one was absolutely loaded with group two like all rookies yeah it i would call it a flop yeah i was just like yeah it's like that's the best you could do i mean i get it that like the texas getting cut out of the schedule was kind of a late thing um come to phoenix i'm sure you can make it work Show the NASCAR drivers how to drive that track. Phoenix under the lights and Indy cars on the new configuration. Would be, I think it'd be um, a lot of fun. I'd, I'd be there in a heartbeat. Fly out there for it. I've been quietly petitioning the president of Phoenix Raceway. Get the deal done. Get the deal done. But I mean, it's good. Indy's like, at least, you know, we've got... The you know, it's back in Nashville, super speedway for the finale. Not by choice, but you know, it's like okay, oval race. You got the it's two what the course is gonna be. You got the Milwaukee weekend, you've got Iowa, you obviously have Indianapolis. So it's you know, they're doing better on the ovals. I'm not missing anything, am I? No, because Texas is gone. Gateway. Oh, gateway, gateway. Oh, I'm gonna forget. Uh, yeah, so I mean that. Hey, it's you know there's more ovals being mixed in, which is good. And uh, just Phoenix race here, late March, early April. Just put under the, lights. Promote the dumb thing. Like tomorrow. just promote it. Like the reason nobody attended is because nobody promoted it. Granted, the racing wasn't great the last time around, but. And then you're already out there for Long Beach. Yeah. Head up the road to Long Beach. It's not that far. I do the trip every summer. There you go. So, IndyCar. IndyCar. Your yeah, you're welcome. You can take that one. You don't even have to give me credit for it. Just get the Phoenix race back on the schedule. I'll take it. Uh, so Coda, I mentioned that a little bit ago. I I like Coda. I like Coda a lot. I, I think it's a really unique track. And it is weekend. it's fun. It's it's a lot of fun. You know, and, and it's good. They moved the start zone back. So there is less of a you know, less of that congestion going up the hill into turn one. Uh, which I think definitely helped because it wasn't nearly as chaotic. Pardon me, this time around. Um, you know, even with the truck race. I watched the truck race. That was a lot of fun. The truck race was a lot of fun, and then Marco Andretti's, you know, rear axle decided to just fall off while he's driving that was wild you see uh, caution like what's going on oh there's marco's car with no wheels and there's this and rear wheels the, like, are gone head on track shot and the replay it's like he's driving and then oh, the whole back end just goes up <laughs> i i haven't that heard anything from nascar i should say he's now at r&d yeah i haven't heard anything they made some initial comments on it but yeah they've had the I, I want to say I saw something from Steve Letarte today. Say like I've never seen anything like that before. No, I don't recall seeing that in any races other than just a car getting demolished in a wreck. Yeah, you know, the the Andretti curse is real. <laughs> There's no other way to explain it. No, uh, it, it's a thing. You know, and th then um, you you had in the Xfinity race you had. Uh, a really good last lap battle with Austin Hill, SVG, and then um, Kyle Larson. And Austin Hill's leading 
going into the technical area and kind of the last, you know, the last sector of the, tr of the, the track SVG just runs right into the back of him trying to move him out of the way and smashes up his front end and uh, ends up knocking him both out. And they fell in fact, both of them fell pretty far back too. Yeah, I didn't get to see the last few laps. I was watching the nine to leave with about 10 laps to go, but that was a fun race. Lots of off-track penalties through the S's. And that then was really the, the only four, area uh, where they... Four or something. It was a right-hander. They were going off-roading. <laughs> yeah, there were some, there were some complaints. I noticed they had a, there was a partial repave of the track. Did you see there were some areas where it was very distinctively repaved and then you're on yeah, to the a lot of the turns were repaved. So in the cup race, there were a lot of penalties. Yes, there were. So yep, they so, need to figure that out. So Kyle, oh, I guess Austin Hill still finished second. Um I think it was they just bumped each other enough to no, allowed Larson to get by, wasn't it? Yeah, SVG fell to twenty seventh. Oh. Yeah, he 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 smashed up his front end, and um, you know, in the Cup race on Sunday, it was pretty clean. I don't think they had any cautions. I think it was caution free. Yeah, I mean it. Let's see if we can get some stats here. When I saw Kyle Bush was upset at the end of the race. Yeah, and what's new? Chris Bell. And Christopher Bell's just kind of standing there like... Okay. I, I actually haven't seen like the two incidents that he was referencing. Um, I saw it, but I don't really remember much of it. It, it wasn't really... I mean, if you give space and you're going to dive it in there and you don't take out the other driver, you know, that's kind of racing. Yeah. Because you got, what, two kind of three-ish hairpins. <laughs> yeah, and Kyle, Kyle Bush, you know, has his has his reputation to begin with. Who You know, he's been pretty subdued, granted, the last couple of seasons. Yeah, he had... Byron wins. Ty Gibbs finishes third. Alex Bowman had a really good day, finished fourth. He's good at Coda. Bubba Wallace finished 15th, which is notable because I think they said his best finish at Coda before yeah, uh, Sunday was uh, like 27th or something. <laughs> so that's good, good improvement for Bubba. Um, now off to Richmond. Yeah, good improvement. Still can't say I'm a fan, though. I mean, he, he does have some of the best-looking cars every week. I did yeah. see DoorDash dropped NASCAR altogether. DoorDash is going to be dropping everything here soon. Yeah. Yeah, DoorDash ended their sponsorship with 2311, and they also got out of sponsoring NASCAR altogether as well. Well, uh, part so of it, I think it has to stand... Not entirely, but some of the I was actually reading about DoorDash the other day, how they're losing customers out in I think Washington. Because they've made the pay better for the gig employees. Oh yeah, yeah. Ten dollar orders that are now costing you forty. And people are going, Nope. Yeah, they uh the the model of taking advantage of the uh the gig workers is uh is seems like it's gonna be uh not gonna last too much longer. Yeah, I did it for a while. I did some grocery shopping with shipped and we did pretty well. That's only gonna last for so long. Yeah. I mean, early on, you remember when like Lyft and Uber first came out? And they're mm -hmm. showing like what some of the drivers were making. And there's like people like quitting their full time jobs and just driving for Uber full time. And then, you know, the financials come out and Uber's bleeding money. And they're, you know, like, we got to make a profit, guys. And mm. yeah, I've paid my taxes and stuff. But there were weeks that I worked not that much and still made over $700 a week. Wow. 
So it's like you got to be in the right market and the right delivery. Yeah, then you got to get some luck along the way. You just happen to catch that good order. And uh, yeah, on on uh, Reddit, there's like a Uber, you know, Uber Lyft, Grubhub, you know, all those companies and people are DoorDash and, and like the drivers are sharing their stories and experiences and there was one where they this driver had a it was like an Uber ride, and the Uber or the pastor who called for the ride wanted the Uber driver to drive like eight hundred miles. From them. No. Like, are you kidding me? Uh, crazy stuff. So, uh, yeah, Wednesday night dash is in between seasons. We got a. Uh, couple of new drivers already we're recruiting so frracingonline.com forward slash wnd we're trying to round it out at 20 we don't know what our official number is but it's gonna be greater than 15 at if we don't add anybody else there's a couple of people who don't know if they're coming back or not if they're gonna race a, a full or part schedule so we want to get to 20 nice round number 20 drivers yeah I, I think it's it's definitely doable this time so I'm come race with us I'm excited to get back out in the trucks. I haven't done that in a while. I've always enjoyed racing these cars. The The last three official oval races I've done in iRacing were trucks. And I did yeah, okay at Kansas. I did really well at the new Atlanta. We'll be at the old Atlanta. And then, um, oh, we did our... Uh, Fun race for the multi class where we mix the trucks with the Gen Fours. <laughs> yeah, I think the trucks actually suit my drive style a little bit better than even what the next gens do. I, I'm yeah, in my time trial running when I was going out and you know figuring laps and I'm looking at track guides and comparing times and looking at officials and I'm like, it's not bad. Uh, you know, I I've got some work to do at New Hampshire. And I got to shave probably about five or six seconds off at Sonoma if I want to be competitive. But um, let's stay out of the mess. I, I I should be okay this season. Sonoma will probably be the shot of my work. <laughs> Before or after? Both. <laughs> oh, man. And then, um, yeah, so and then finally the in Indy Racing World Series comes back. April yeah, it's supposed to be kind of like a mid-season short break, but unfortunately I had to postpone a race. Yeah. Because of... We're only three races in, and to be honest, part of the perks of running your own league. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, availability of not having a race admin there. You can't really run a league without the race admin. Yeah, and being on the road for two weeks makes it hard. You know, they say like let the uh, the inmates run the asylum. <laughs> no, you, you imagine if NASCAR allowed like self policing. Oh, <laughs> maybe they need to get back to that. Make it more exciting. <laughs> I won't get into it though. We've talked points. Get rid somebody, of the stage breaks. Somebody got Our upset. Points are the playoffs that I hate. There, there are a couple. I mean, there was the the Bush and the you know the Christopher Bell. No, I mean it wasn't really. Yeah, you know, it was just a one sided rant. And somebody got upset at Parker Kligerman. I think it was this weekend. Oh, yes. And who was it? Custer was upset with um, Sam Mayer, Sam Smith. Yeah, Lundin. what's new? <laughs> <laughs> I remember me. He See, like for, remember that for later. Seems like for a while. Oh, and and Austin Hill was upset at SVG over his you know bumping him out of the way at the end. And I guess Austin Hill's spotters like, dude, I I would have done the same thing he did to you to win the race. Like, come on, that's like that's crazy. Funny. He has done that to other cars as well. Oh, he has. He's definitely done it. It was like the old Denny Hamlin. I'm going to race you hard and put you in a wall, but if you do it to me, I'm going to cry wolf and 
rant about you on Monday on my podcast, <laughs> and then you, end up getting myself fined. What's the was the podcast the turning point for Denny Hamlin before he like for him to become full villain? Yeah, I think it was um, when he admitted to taking out Ross Chastain. <laughs> when he was like, "Well, if I'm getting taken out of this race, I'm taking him with me," <sighs> and so he takes him. And then he admits it on his podcast, and NASCAR goes, uh, "No, you admitted this, so we're going to find you." And then sure. I think after that, it's just been full villain ever since. Well, and then uh, you know he lost the it was disqualified from that Pocono. It was it was Pocono? It was him, wasn't it? The Pocono race disqualification. Yeah, is that the one that Chase Elliott ended up winning? Because yeah, Pop Chase that. is like, I don't want that trophy. I don't because I'm not taking a win that way. Um, but Hamlin after the disqualification, the next day he's like sitting at his table eating his eating a bowl of cereal with the trophy sitting next to him. <laughs> Just like ultimate trolling. It's not funny. I really liked Hamlin, and I want to like Hamlin, but just. Be willing to admit that people can read, or even just acknowledge that I can race a certain way, but I don't like it when others do it to me. That's right. It was Hamlin and Bush got disqualified from poking open. Extra layer of unapproved tape added to the nose in front of the wheel wells. Yep. Just admit oh. that, and I'll be a Hamlin fan again. Justin Haley got disqualified this weekend. He was having a really good weekend and his car was under was, the weight limit. Yeah. He was having a really good weekend. And it's like, hey, you know, maybe Rick Ware's starting to figure some things out and then he gets disqualified. Yeah, I like how they kind of pulled a reference that the crew chiefs learned how to knock weight off during the car during the race. <laughs> the the classic Chad Knaus getting caught on a hot mic, like do, if we win this race, you got to make sure that somebody hits you in the back. <laughs> wow, those were the good days of racing. Like everyone gets, oh, you're such a cheater! You're such a cheater! They all like the the whole culture of NASCAR is cheating to not get caught. That's kind of the same thing. The Tour of France, Lance Armstrong wins seven in a row. Did you really have a competitive advantage when literally the entire field was on? Yeah. Yeah. Like the, there was like a stretch of like 15 years where every Tour de France winner was disqualified because they had tested positive for PEDs after the fact. It was the German guy. I forget his name. Uh, Eric Zabel. And then, yeah. it, you know, in baseball, it's like, you know, everybody yeah. in the 90s was juicing. And when you look at it like that, it's a level playing field. Now, maybe numbers and records and stats can, you can put a mark on those, but at the end of the day, everybody's doing the same stuff. It's, yeah, it's an era. All like, you know, Bob Costas, I liked his solution is like, you can't keep Barry Bonds out of the Hall of Fame. You can't keep Roger Clemens out of the Hall of Fame. They were two of the best in that era. And it's like, put them in there, but put a giant, you know, disclaimer that said, hey, these guys were roiding up. They were the best of their era. Yeah, put it, put it. It was the 1990s. It was the steroid era. And uh, you know, and then Otani this week firing his in you know his interpreter for stealing his money to bet with an illegal bookie, and everyone's like, "Oh, was it really him? How did he not? How did Otani not know that his interpreter was taking millions of dollars?" Baseball, are we going to see a chance of Pete Rose come to the Hall of Fame finally? Yeah, yeah. Pete Pete Rose actually put a video on social media. He's like, "I was only one interpreter away from the Hall of Fame." <laughs> like, and that's a, that's fishy enough. There are so many holes in this story that. Something yeah, there's, 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 there. there's, there's missing details that are definitely under a rug that will come out at some point. Did I ever tell you about the, the time? Interpreter I... is actually the straw man. It's Otani's gambling habit. Did I ever tell about the time I, uh, I ran into Pete Rose? I think so. <laughs> yeah, for those who have never heard this before, 
I was at Caesar's Palace in Las Vegas in the sports book. And I'm up at the register placing a bet with my friend. And he goes, look to your left. Look back to your left. Just don't stare. Just glance back to your left. And I kind of you know, do one of those and look back up. And I go, holy crap, man. That's Pete Rose. <laughs> Pete Rose is sitting in the sports book at Caesar's Palace. <laughs> I wonder if Pete lives in Vegas. You know, last he time was there, yeah. he was in one of the memorabilia stores. Yeah, yeah, houses. he he does. There's a memorabilia store in the Caesar's Palace Mall. There, was, I'm, you know, I don't, I haven't been there in years. But there, I, three out of the four times I went to Vegas and went through that mall because there was a cigar shop that I I used to my younger days visit right right there, and. It would always see there'd be a sign in the window, meet Pete Rose here today. And so he'd be signing autographs and uh, and then he was done. And then and he's sitting over there. He's just chilling. He's wearing a suit. He's got a Cincinnati Reds ball cap on and uh, he's just sitting there chilling, watching the ponies, but glancing over at the baseball. <laughs> yeah, I'm interested to see where all this ends up. If it ends up being just a huge theft thing, is it actually a illegal betting going on when it shouldn't like, be I'm, like there's I'm one one of two things happen is either otani is the dumbest person with his money ever or they're covering up a bigger scandal well people they were connected with were already getting investigated by the feds yeah so. yeah i think we're gonna see something if you know if major league baseball doesn't properly investigate this which they won't I think we might see something from a uh, a Fed's case here that will, you know, he might not be criminally indicted, but it, it'll be in somebody's notes, I'm sure. Now, I would like to think that baseball will do something, but I would prefer to see Manfred fired as commissioner because I think he's been a detriment to the game and the yeah. development. So I don't think he will risk taking off the now highest paid player in the history of baseball off the field. Yeah. He's bringing in too much money to the league. Too much money and more attention than they've had in a long time. Yep. So I don't think Manfred will be willing to do that. So there's your baseball talk. And baseball season starting this week. Uh, oh. Chase, Chase Field had its first rain out in the history of the ballpark the other night. Um, uh, long story there, but basically the roof, they have the retractable roof and they have a safety policy in place right now that they will not open or close the roof with fans in the ballpark. Makes and, sense. and the reason for that, well, they used to like, they would, what they would do is they would start with the, they would close the roof. They'd have the air kick on, cool the place down. And then about the third or the fourth inning, they'd open the roof up as like the sun goes down. And, you know, you'd have a, it might be 100, 105 degrees outside, but still nice. It's a nice outdoor ball game. You know, and when you hit monsoon season, they'd keep the roof closed all the time because you never know when the dust storm pops in or just, you know, that monsoon storm will pop in. So they would frequently keep the roof closed once you got through the middle of June. So this building was built in the mid 90s. It's not a bad building. People criticize it. It's not a bad stadium by any means. But the the roof uses a, a set of pulley systems and pulleys and cables to pull the roof closed. And, you know, it basically comes, there's a video on stadium scene that I took of how of it, you know, it works. And it basically comes together and it has like these plates that, you know, they're, they're different layers and they kind of accordion together. And then, you know, they come apart. The problem is there's like three miles of pulley cable running through the roof. Yeah, through it's like two and a half, three miles of cable. Like it's some absurdly large number of cable. And they're afraid that one, either the cable will break, it's a very, very large cable, or the pulley will break, or chunks of the roof will fall when the pulley or cable system breaks and drop debris in the stadium and with people in there. Yeah. Not a good thing to have happen. Nope. So probably something that you should have been um, renovating in the off season. Here. Well, there, there, there's a stadium dispute going on there. Um, the what county, Arizona, yeah, right, 
Right. You know, they can't find a hockey stadium. They finally got the basketball stadium taken care of. Uh, but the, the Diamondbacks want, want some of that, that free tax money. And, you know, the county technically owns the stadium. The Diamondbacks have to pay for upgrades, but the county is responsible for, like, maintaining the building. And it's become this huge point of contention. And then their, their lease in the building ends in 2027. And they've threatened to leave Phoenix, whether it's, you know, leave downtown, whether it's move somewhere else in the Valley. And, you know, they've even threatened, like, you know, if we have to go to Nashville or Portland, it's like, you're not leaving Phoenix. Get out of here. Like, it, it's like one of the, you know, it's one of the fastest growing markets in the country. Phoenix is the fifth largest city in the country. It's like the 10th largest metro. You're not going to Portland. Um, but anyway, they're they're not fixing it. But then the other problem is because of the complexity of this pulley system, it takes a couple months to fix it. And because the Diamondbacks went to the World Series last year, they were planning on fixing it last offseason, but they played an extra month of ball games there. And then they had some concerts, so they couldn't do the repairs. So, you know, it's like, hey, you know, they 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 made that unlikely run to the World Series, didn't didn't quite pull it off, but hey, you know. Now it'll be fun to see. Is this considered a maintenance issue or is it an upgrade? Yeah, well, there's that that's been taken care of. Now it's just they're trying to pull for some money to renovate the place uh and or get money to build a new stadium and blah blah blah, tax dollars to build stadiums for billionaires. Uh, you know, that's that's a controversial topic for another day. Money, money, money. Give me money. Anyway, um, yeah, we we talked baseball, we talked gambling, we talked uh we talked the races for this weekend. We got Richmond coming up, no Formula One. Indy's gonna be off for a few weeks until Long Beach. Yep. And uh sign up for Wednesday night dash or sign up for the Indy Racing World Series. We'll pro reach in. We're back at it on Tuesday, 250 miles at the now falling apart, demolished. Uh-huh auto club yeah uh, they uh there's some kind of like warehouse like there was a press release of like what they're building on the land that they sold and they're calling it like the speedway industrial center or something it's like you know what you want to just spit in our face even more you just did that rip auto club I speedway. I, I did get to drive by charlotte motor speedway that is a massive complex. It's, yeah, it's really complex. nice too. The dirt track, the drag strip. The, it's a good spot. I, I hear it's very, very nice actually. I, I need to get to a Coke 600. Problem is it's, you know, I will need to set a country Indy 500s the same day, but <laughs> maybe, maybe pull, if, um, pull off a double. If our projects are taking off like we hope, and maybe we can finish up one and fly to the next. Cool. Yeah, we get get the helicopter to the airport and take the private jet down to Charlotte. <laughs> yep. Like then, Kyle Larson's going to do here in a couple of months. Then I got to finally make a stop in Kannapolis, North Carolina, and I got to visit the Dale Earnhardt statue. Oh yeah, yeah, you did. You sent me that. The that was a very nice place right there. Yeah, it looked really nice. I was able to, I probably would have just sat there for a little while. There's just some cherry blossoms and the trees blooming. The church bells were going off when I was there. Oh, that's very nice. Very nice to look. Oh, and then uh, we didn't talk. A big time, but a great person. Did you see the story about North Wilkesboro? Uh, no. I thought it was a joke at first. But North Wilkesboro had to repair part of the grandstands because a sinkhole formed Ooh. under the grandstand. And when they went in to inspect the sinkhole, they found a moonshine tunnel. Nice. And they said, the, the rumored moonshine tunnel is too. We have found it. That's <laughs> like, that's the most NASCAR thing ever. You've got a moonshine tunnel underneath... Yes. Underneath one of your oldest operating speedways. <laughs> well, that is how NASCAR started. It certainly was, but it's just like it was a rumor, and then it was just a haha urban legend thing. No, no, it is it true. Is 
It is true. The moonshine tunnel of North Wilkesboro Speedway. I wish I had a little bit more time. I would have taken a 50-minute drive north up to Martinsville because it wasn't too far away from there. And thought about trying to go to Concord Speedway. I don't think Concord Speedway exists anymore. Yeah, let's find where it was. I think it I I want to say they sold it to like like an auto auction company or something like that. And the reason it's in iRacing is because they scanned it before they demolished it. Be fun to go to the now defunct racetrack venues and see what's there, what's left of them. Yeah, it closed in 2019. Like another one that would be fun to go back to where it was, um, Nazareth. Yeah, it was sold to an online vehicle auction service called Copart. Some of these classic tracks now, they're going away. And you're hearing about these... Uh, I think it was Hunter Hughes was telling me the other week about there was a little track that uh, in his hometown that was really cool and uh, I guess the owner of the track got up involved in some shady business dealings and it you know it's not there anymore and it's a bummer these you know these are historical tracks and I grew up for five minutes from Kokomo Speedway and I never went to a race there ever yeah, I'm trying to find a way to get to a race. Did you ever go to Kokomo Speedway? I'm not. I, I actually spent I, more time at the dirt track near Logan Sport than okay. I did at Kokomo. I don't need, what where was that at? Um it was right next to a campground. Um heading towards Logan Sport, but I forget the um road. I can't it still can't be there today, is it? I doubt it. Never officially confirmed it, but there was a US like, 24 oh, speedway. That's probably it. Is there a campground next to it? Uh or like it, a little pond. Yeah, there's a pond behind it. You know what? I know exactly where this is. I drove by that. This is a golf course I used to play at. And then there's France Park, which I went to many times. At the bottom of that pond lake, the rumor was it was for like divers. There was a bus and like a plane at the bottom of it. Oh, no kidding. That's what I've heard. Never confirmed it though. How about that? Yeah, I went to quite a few races at that one. Yeah, it's it apparently fun. it's still there. And there was Gas City Speedway, too. Never went to that one, either. Drove by it a lot. Gas City. Awesome, name. Yeah, if it lines up, I'll probably try this summer. I'm going to be down in Indiana a little bit, so maybe I'll be there for a while. You know what you need to do? You need to, like, reach out to the track organizers and just tell them, like, I want to do a, a bit, you know, some social media stuff for the – you know, for the site and for the uh, for the social media, and see if they'll let you like give you some special credentials there. I should. Yeah, yeah. you're a hometown guy. Like you got to do it. I don't pull I it. Want, we've gotten far enough now with podcasts and everything that we've been doing that we can apply for some credentials at different things. I mean, we're close enough. I wonder who owns it now. The O'Connor maybe around for it. I actually need to look at their schedule and just see what's all going on. I wonder if it's the same. Interesting. When you hit stop, I'm gonna I might know these people, or at one point did, but We'll talk about it after hit stop here. So FRRacingOnline.com at FRRacingOnline on all social media streaming platforms. Tune in next Tuesday for the Indy Racing World Series at Auto Club. Long race. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Should be Thanks. a good battle. Yep. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Take care.